Next time before you import an object into a scene from the asset browser, wait a second. Blender offers four import options. Follow preference, link, append and append reuse data. Follow preference is the default option. It is what we set when creating the asset browser catalog. By default, Blender offers append reuse data, so most users use that option. But is append reuse data the best option? Let's start with the append option. If we import the object as an append, it is the same as if we went to the Blender file where the object is stored, copy it and paste it into the new Blender file. This building contains 50 megabytes of data. Now our Blender file contains the same amount because we copied everything into it. If we import this building 10 times with append option, it is the same as we using shift D 10 times. So each building is now new object and we imported about 500 megabytes of data. The advantage of this is that each building is a separate object that we can adapt as needed. If we import the building as append reuse data, the first time we copied the object into our scene, so the same as append. But if we import the same object several times, we import an instance of that object, just like using alt D. If we edit one building, you can see that all the others are just instances. This option is better than just append because it saves memory if we want to use the same buildings more than once. So 10 of the same building still have 50 megabytes. We can only make variations with rotation or scale. One note, if you delete objects from the scene, you will not delete textures, shaders, geometry nodes and some other data. To do this, go to unused data and click purge. If we import 10 different buildings, each one will add a new data. So in that case append reuse data turns out to be the same as append. But if we save this building once on our computer, does it make sense to duplicate the same data once more, especially dozens of times, and we don't want to make major changes to them. It doesn't really make sense because there is a link option. If we import the object as a link, there is no data of this object in our Blender file. All data is stored in the original file which is located somewhere on our computer. We can see that our Blender file is 821 kilobytes, the same as the empty Blender file. But we have a problem. We can't edit this building, we can't move it, rotate it or scale it. Practically, we can't do anything. The location and everything is the same as in file where it is stored. So we can't even choose where to place our object when import, like we can do with the append option. For the link option to be useful, we need to solve this problem. The solution to that problem is called library override. But before I show you how powerful the library override option is, let me introduce you to the Skillshare, the sponsor of this video. If you follow my channel, you know that I mostly do cinematic Blender tutorials. I publish short tutorials on the channel and you can find some of the full classes on Skillshare. This time completely for free during one month free trial if you are one of the first 500 people to hit the link in the video description. But not only my classes. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts across film, 3D, modeling, design, video, post-production, productivity and more. Skillshare can help you take your career, skills, hobbies, passions or side hustles to the next level. Skillshare also has a large number of Blender classes from some of the most famous Blender creators such as Sadr Shoti, Derek Elliott, Smith and others. If you want to learn more about green screen compositing in Blender, I would recommend this class by Alden Peters, who has many years of experience in VFX using Blender. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive one month free trial on Skillshare. Get started today. Thanks Skillshare for sponsoring this video, let's now back to the library override option. If we set the object as library override, all information such as mesh, textures, vertex groups, shaders, modifiers, etc. are still stored in the other Blender files. But we get the option to override some information from the original Blender file, such as transform data or manage modifiers and many other options. Those overriden data are marked in blue, and our Blender file is now larger by several kilobytes, 
because Blender saves the changed data in our file, but nothing more than that. With this we solved one problem. Now we can move it or for example edit the modifiers and a lot more, but we still cannot edit mesh or for example shader. The free edit linked library addon can help us here. If we select the object we want to change and press N, under item we have the option to jump to the original Blender file with one click, where we can make the change and return to our Blender file with one click. For example, this building has a customizable day and night shader. If I want to turn on the lights, with one click I can jump to the original Blender file, make a change in the shader and return to the working file. The add-on saves the changes automatically and returns us to the working file with one click, practically as if we never left the Blender file we are working in. One note, the Blender file must be saved on our computer in order to be able to return to it after making changes. This not only solves the problem of unnecessary memory consumption, but also significantly speeds up the viewport and render. This is the conclusion. If you don't want to make major changes to the model, for example to change the mesh and create another version of the building, link is the best import method. For example, when creating my smart trees asset package, I went one step further. We import the tree as a link, and the tree as a link imports the photoscan parts of the tree that are saved in the 77 different Blender files. So, the current Blender file imports an object from another file and the second file imports object from a third file. In this way, we can have incredibly detailed trees and everything works quickly even on our weaker computers. Without this structuring, if you want to import all the trees, you would have to import 1.6 GB of data. The same ones that I downloaded earlier and saved somewhere on the computer. Now the whole forest is less than 1 megabyte and through the library override option I used all the options. If you are interested in the building asset package or the smart trees asset package, look for it in the links below. The Blender Market Cyber Sale is currently active where you can download all packages and tutorials with a single subscription on Patreon or YouTube join.